Continuing on with our oligopoly um, lecture here, this is right where we got cut off, talking about game theory. And um, I just wanted to take one more second to make sure that you have some of this lingo down that you really need to know. So um, each player in the game is going to have what we call a dominant strategy and a dominated strategy. So the dominant strategy for the firm, as I mentioned, means that that strategy which would be either advertise or don't advertise in this uh, in this option or in this game here that would be their two options for strategy so the dominant strategy is the strategy that has the highest payoff no matter what the other player in the game does um, so for Marlboro their dominant strategy is going to be to advertise because then whether or not Camel advertises or doesn't advertise Marlboro is going to be okay the reason that Marlboro's dominated strategy is not to advertise is that, you know, if, if Marlboro doesn't advertise but then Campbell decides to go ahead and advertise, Marlboro is totally going to lose. So you have to just look at what is the player's best case scenario um, assuming the worst from their competitor. So again, firms are not going to cooperate even if they'd both be better off if they did. So in this game, if neither Marlboro or Camel advertised, they'd both make $4 billion a piece in profits, which would make them both better off. But since they can't trust each other, both firms, both players, are going to end up advertising and earning $3 billion a piece in profits. So, when both firms have a dominant strategy that matches up, we call that the Nash Equilibrium. So, in this game, the Nash Equilibrium would be for Marlboro and Camel both to advertise. So, the Nash Equilibrium is like what's going to happen in reality. In the practice problem packet, there's a great example and explanation of this that looks at Pepsi versus Coke. So, take a look at that as well. Okay, so in summary... Oligopolists maximize their total profits by forming a cartel and acting like a monopolist. So they're going to produce where MR equals MC and then reference the demand curve for the price. Um, and if, if oligopolists decide they're going to be revenue maximizers, then they could produce a greater quantity and a lower price than under the monopoly outcome. So they could, um, again, collude and act as a monopolist and divide up the output or try to sell as much as possible and be revenue maximizers and produce where MR equals zero or <laughs> oligopolistic firms could be interdependent and engage in game theory strategy assuming the kink demand curve so interdependence illustrates that firms consider other firms when making decisions remember it's like a tennis match self-interest can prevent people from maintaining cooperation even when cooperation is in their mutual self-interest. So even when it's better for Camel and Marlboro both not to advertise, they're both going to advertise anyway because they can't trust the, the other party to, uh, to do what's best overall for everybody. So cheating, there is an incentive to cheat. Um, Alright, and then this is kind of a summary of some of the attributes of the four market structures that we've studied so far. And this is all review, and this is what you have recorded in, in the chart in the beginning of your problem, practice problem packet. Um, but the reason I put this in here is you'll notice that for oligopoly, a lot of the answers are, oh, it varies, it varies, it varies, it varies, because we don't know. It depends on um, what course of action an oligopolist chooses to, to follow. You know, are they going to collude and act, analyze the industry as a monopoly? Are they going to try to revenize, or I'm sorry, maximize revenue and just increase sales as much as possible? Or are they going to be interdependent and engage in game theory play? So, a glance backward, just a little review here of what we've learned in this unit, or the big things that we've learned. Perfect competition and pure monopoly, I should say, unregulated pure monopoly are uncommon in reality. Monopolistically competitive firms are the most common, that's what we see most often, but oligopolies produce the largest share of the economy's output. Profits are going to be zero in long-run equilibrium under perfect competition and monopolistic competition 
because of freedom of entry and exit into and out of the market, so they're going to end up producing where average revenue or price equals average total cost at a normal rate of return. And in equilibrium, MR equals MC is going to be the profit maximizing level of output for the profit maximizing firm in any market form, including oligopoly. But the thing is, in oligopoly, sometimes the producers um, have other goals that are more important to them than maximizing profits. But if they were just trying to maximize profits, they would also produce where MR equals MC. The perfect competitive firm and industry are most efficient, both allocatively and productively. Monopoly is the least efficient, and monopolistic competition is also um, fairly inefficient. More efficient than monopoly, but not as efficient as perfect competition. And under oligopoly, almost anything can happen. All right, and that's it. Longest lecture ever, it felt like, didn't it? But we went through a lot of information, um, and we will review and go through some practice problems in class.